everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making a really adorable little pouch. We're going to be making the Orlando pouch from I Think So. Now, this pattern comes in three different sizes and I don't always make all of the versions of a pattern when it comes in multiple sizes, but it sews up so fast and I just really wanted to see the difference in all three of them, so I made all three of them. So first we'll talk about the smallest one, which is so cute. This is a pencil pouch and I love that they included this option because it is a very small skinny pouch. Let me grab some of my things. So I've got some pens and markers. You can see they fit in there perfectly. The cool thing about this pouch is this little detail here on the top and we're going to talk more about why this is here, how helpful that is. I will talk about that more in a little bit, but you can see we have some rivets here. You're going to want to use some rivets. I can give you some advice. If you don't have rivets and you still want to finish it off, but you might not be able to have it lay down flat like this, the rivets here are going to be really helpful. So if you don't have a rivet press, that's totally fine. You can use Chicago screws or you can use rivets where you kind of hammer them in. The pattern actually goes through how to apply rivets without the press, but more with a hammer. So if you're interested in doing that, I highly suggest giving it a try because the rivets really add a beautiful look to the sides of the pouch. So this is the small size. Next up, we have the medium size, and the medium size is the size we're going to be building today in the tutorial. This is just a great boxy bag, but here's the thing. It's not a traditional box corner boxy bag. Instead, we have a little bit of a curved bottom here. So when you're deciding fabric placement, label placement, that's something to keep in mind. I'll give you some tips as we get to that point in the tutorial. For the two larger sizes, we have little wristlet straps so you can hold it like that. This is totally optional. You don't have to put it on there if you don't want to. We have a top zipper. Again, we have these folded down sides here. And then we have the lining. Last is the large size. You can see it looks just like the medium size. It's just a little bit longer. So if I stack them on top, they're about the same height. The larger side is just larger on the length of it. All three of them are made up of these two exterior panels, so I do suggest you have some fun with that. You can see in the other two, I actually stick with the same fabric for both the panels. However, on this one, I switched it up. I'm gonna be doing that in the tutorial as well. I mean, when you have this separation here, you might as well have some fun. Again, a nice big top zipper and our lining. Okay, so a couple things to note about this pattern. Yes, rivets, Chicago screws. I highly, highly recommend it. I will have some links down in the description for some more affordable options if you're not interested in getting the whole big press and everything like that. There are a lot of options out there for you to install and have this look without having all the big equipment. Next, we do have a curved bottom. So for those of you who are still kind of finding your footing in bag making and you haven't really messed with curves yet, this is a great pattern to kind of get your feet wet. This is a great pattern to try out these curves because you know what, if you don't get it perfect, it's fine. It's not gonna be that noticeable on this. So practice your curves on this and then you can move on to the bigger backpacks and the you know really round cases we like to make. And then last, what I know some of you guys are going to hate, and I, and I really hope if you don't like doing binding on seams, I hope you try the way I do it. I use waterproof canvas for the lining of all three of these bags. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to use a thinner fabric on the exterior without having to add much interfacing besides, you know, a cotton woven interfacing. Waterproof canvas is like that firm interfacing you don't have to add. You just use it as your lining and now you have structure to your bag and you don't have to mess with, you know, adhering and trying to finagle some thicker, you know, interfacing or anything like that. But since I use waterproof canvas for the lining, that means I used waterproof canvas for the binding. Now, we're only gonna have binding around the bottom seam that goes around the very bottom here that attaches the base to the exterior panels. It's not much, it's not noticeable. If you use waterproof canvas, you don't have to worry about all the double folds and keeping everything straight and making sure it's all aligned. It's very, very easy. This is one of those bags where you can be sloppy, you can make mistakes, and it still turns out really, really adorable. I mean, every single one of these bags, I made mistakes, and anybody looking at them would never be able to tell. I promise you, I promise you. So this is a great, great bag for beginners. It's a great bag for intermediate folks who are trying to transition from just the basic pouches and boxy bags and move more into the curvy, kind of more elaborate bags. 
If you're not sure if you want to invest in the rivets and everything like that, get some Chicago screws. They're very affordable. You can kind of get the idea of the effect it gives to your bags and if that's something you want to kind of move more into in the future. So as always, thank you so much to I Think So for allowing me to film these awesome tutorials. If you haven't checked out their website, go ahead and look at it. They have a bazillion patterns. I mean, patterns for everything. It's, it's, it's overwhelming really when you go on there and you're like, I wanna make something. Oh my gosh, I'm drowning in options. Now I wanna make everything. This is a great option. I hope you give it a try. I have a few other tutorials for I Think So, so I'll have those linked down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything else you want to say, tips, tricks, anything, leave them down in the comment section of this video. At the very top of the comment section will be a comment from me, and it will have timestamps for every single part of this tutorial. I will tell you this sews up very quick. This sews up very, very quick. Like I said, I don't usually make all the sizes of a pattern because of time. I was able to get all three of these out in one day, from cutting to sewing everything one day. Easy peasy. You're going to love this bag, I promise. All right, let's get started. So here's what I'll be using to construct the bag today. I'll be using two different fabrics for the exterior. So you're gonna want about a quarter of a yard of each. I have this beautiful waxed canvas. Now I have a link for where I get this down below. Now wax canvas is pretty much just cotton canvas that's been dipped in wax. So it's got like a malleable quality to it. It's really fun to work with. I have not had any problems at all with my machine. The thing I like about wax canvas too is that as it ages and you press it and it creases, it gets these, you know, distressed parts on it. It doesn't, it doesn't destroy the integrity of the fabric. It just gives it a really cool look. I love wax canvas. So I'll be using this for part of the sides and the bottom of the bag. For the other part of the front, I'll be using quilt cotton. Next, I have the scrap piece of cork, and these are gonna be used for the little top ends by the zipper and also for the D-ring connector. You can use vinyl, cork, leather, anything like that here. I do suggest you find something that has raw edges that you don't mind showing because we're not gonna be folding this down in any way to hide those raw edges. So, for example, if you're using you know, a vinyl that has a really fluffy raw edge, that might not be the best one for this pattern. So, something that has a darker you know, edge is gonna be great here. For the lining, you're gonna need about a quarter of a yard. I'm gonna be using waterproof canvas today because I don't like having to add interfacing to everything. Waterproof canvas is great for linings because it's pretty firm. It's a little bit thicker, but not too thick for domestic sewing machines, and it adds a lot of structure to the bag. I will be adding just a tiny bit of interfacing today. This is Woven Fuse from Got Interfacing, and that will just be going on the quilt cotton here for the exterior of the bag. That's just to make sure the quilt cotton can be sewn at the same time as the thicker fabrics without any problems or stretching. Next, you're gonna need zipper. Now, I do suggest using zipper tape here and do not use metal zipper. Make sure you're using a plastic zipper. For the medium size, you're gonna need a 14 inch long zipper. For the bigger bags, like the medium and the large size, if you want, you can add that little D-ring strap and also a wristlet strap. So you're gonna need a half of an inch hardware. So I have a half of an inch D-ring and a half of an inch swivel hook. You're gonna need five sets of double cap rivets. I'm using nine millimeter because that's what I have, but the pattern does suggest a bigger 13 millimeter rivet. I have my bag tag that I'll put on the front of the bag. And then the pattern also suggests you have one yard of three eighths of an inch wide double fold bias tape for that seam in the lining. Now, I don't like using bias tape. Instead, I'm gonna be using a one inch wide piece of my waterproof canvas. And I'm just gonna wrap that right over the seam and be done with it. It's a very simple thing to do. So here are all of our pattern pieces. You can see up here I have a cut from a wristlet strap. You can make this out of vinyl or cork, whatever you're using. I didn't have enough of my cork, so I'm just gonna use waterproof canvas for that strap. Next, I have a small piece of my cork here for the D-ring strap connector. You're gonna need two cuts for your leather top corners. Now I'm using cork for that. And you can see that I actually left my cuts a little bit longer than the pattern suggests just in case it's not quite wide enough to cover all the raw edges. And we'll talk about that as we get there. So when you're cutting this piece out, cut it to the right height, but maybe leave it a little bit longer and we can trim this down as we get to that step. For the bottom of the bag, you're going to need one of your lining cuts and one of your exterior cuts. If you're using quilt cotton for either of these pieces, I do suggest you interface it with woven interfacing. For the lining of the bag, you're gonna need two cuts. And since this is waterproof canvas, I don't have an interface with anything. And then for the front and the back, you're actually gonna have four cuts of exterior fabric. Since I'm gonna be using the little contrast here, I have two cuts of my quilt cotton, both interfaced with woven fuse, and then two cuts of my waxed canvas. 
So here's all the other stuff I'll be using today. I will be using my rivet press. My rivet press comes from Cam Snaps. I'll have a link down in the description for more information on that. My fabric scissors that I like to use are these Kai scissors. I'm gonna be using this hole punch here. The rivet press can also do a hole punch. However, I find that when I'm going back and forth a lot, it's just easier to use a hand hold punch so I don't have to keep changing the dies out. I have my two marking tools here. This is a leather marking tool that I got from Mormino, and then a air racing sew line marker. I also have my seam ripper and stiletto on hand at all times. The needle I'll be using today is a Microtex 8012. For my top thread, I'll be using this Guterman Mara 70 weight. So it's just a little bit thicker and it looks really nice on the top of the bag. However, you don't wanna use this in their bobbin if you're using a domestic machine because it is a little too thick for that. So for my bobbin, I'll just be using this plain Guterman thread that I got from Joann's. So the first thing we're gonna do is make the exterior panels. If you're using two different pieces of fabric, then make sure you have it lined up the way you want it. If you're using the same piece, then it doesn't really matter, but lay them right side up. Make sure your orientation is correct if you have a directional print. And then on these shorter edges, just fold them right sides together and line up those shorter edges. Grab some clips and clip them together to hold in place. Do the same with your other panel. So now we're gonna take both these to the sewing machine and sew along the clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have these two panels sewn together, we're gonna just press them open so we have a nice straight seam running down the center. Now, if you wanna go on the back and press your seam so that both pieces are away from each other and the seam is pressed open, you can do that and then go on the front and top stitch down on both sides. Or you can press the seam so that the seam just goes behind like the thinner fabric like that and then just top stitch down one side. So the rule of thumb here is top stitch down wherever there's a seam. So it's up to you how you lay it. Uh, to be honest, I like the seam going just to one side and then I'll just top stitch down that one side here on the left on my quilt cotton, but it's totally your preference. You can also add two lines of top stitching on both sides to give it a really decorative look. Have fun with this. But for today's tutorial, I'm just gonna do one row of top stitching on the quilt cotton side an eighth of an inch away from the center seam. Okay, so now if you wanna add a bag tag to the exterior of your bag, this is a great time to do it. One thing to remember is that these bottom edges of your exterior panel don't get boxed. So a lot of times when we're doing like a boxed bag, you don't wanna center your logo right on the side because, you know, some of it's going to be folded down. But in this case, this is how tall the side of the bag is gonna be, minus the seam allowance on the top and the bottom. So you can go ahead and center your bag tag on this panel. I'm using a metal bag tag, but in my other versions, I did use a woven bag tag that I just sewed on. So I'm actually just gonna take my front panel, fold it in half along the long edges just to find that midpoint mark. Since I'm using this wax canvas, I can actually just pinch there. And now I have a little line here on my wax canvas of where that mark is. I'm going to center my washer over that grab a marking tool and just mark the spots for the prongs of my logo and then i can grab my seam ripper and just very gently rip along those marks you always want it to be a little bit on the smaller side when you're ripping these slits here rather than the bigger side i can take my bag tag and just insert that in here now if you're using thinner fabric, you might wanna add some heavier interfacing. I have this scrap of Decoville Light here. You could also use fusible fleece. You could also just use another scrap of whatever you're using, vinyl, cork, this canvas here, whatever you can find. Just something to kind of hold this in place so that these prongs aren't tugging on the fabric so much. So I'm just going to use my washer to mark the same placement spots on this interfacing cut here. And now I'll just insert this interface over the prongs and then I can add my washer for it and then I'll just fold down the prongs. And now, especially if you're using quilt cotton for your lining, you're gonna wanna cover these prongs because as these prongs wear against that quilt cotton, it will start to wear down the fabric. So I'm just gonna grab another scrap piece of my Decoville Light since I have it here. Again, you can use whatever you want. You can use your woven fuse or another piece of fabric, just something to cover it so that it doesn't wear down the lining. Now, I'm not terribly concerned since my lining is waterproof canvas. It's a lot beefier, it can withstand a lot. But just to show you, 
I'm actually just gonna glue this in place. I'm not even going to iron it because my iron is not heated up at the time. So I have glue here, it's quicker and it's fine. So I've got some glue on this. I'm just going to glue this over the back of my tag just to protect the fabric that will be touching it. There we go. Now we flip it over, make sure it's straight. That's good. Okay, so now we're gonna attach the zipper. So take whichever panel you consider the front of your bag. For me, that's gonna be one with the tag and we'll start with that one. And now you can cut your zipper down to size beforehand, but I actually like to wait until after the panel is constructed and then I will cut my zipper tape so it's just a little bit longer. I like to have some wiggle room and then trim down the zipper in the end. So I'm going to just eyeball this and cut it so that it's longer. And then I'm going to add my zipper pull. And now when the zipper is closed, so when the zipper pull is going and closing the zipper, it should be on the left side. So zipper pull on the left side, lay your zipper right side down against the right side of your exterior front panel. And then we'll just clip this in place. Get it as straight as you can. I know sometimes it's hard to get straight around that zipper pull area. Once you have this clipped in place, let's go ahead and baste this down. So we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And we're gonna set our stitch length really big, like as big as it will go, like five millimeters, six millimeters. You just want a nice big stitch length here. Make sure you're using a zipper foot now. So if you haven't already attached it, get that zipper foot on the machine. Okay, once you have that zipper basted on, grab one of your lining panels and with the exterior right side up, zipper wrong side up, take your lining panel and lay it right side down, wrong side up, and line it up with the top edge of the exterior panel. So if your zipper overextends like mine does, don't line up your lining panel with the edge of the zipper. We're gonna line it up with the top and the edge of the exterior panel. Go ahead and just clip these together. Sometimes I like to clip over here on the side as well because I find that my panels kind of start to shift all over the place. So I'll do the top corners and the sides first and then I will clip together the rest of this top edge. Okay, so now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. When you come to your zipper pull, don't try to go around it. Stop sewing, lift up your presser foot but keep your needle down move the zipper pull out of the way, make sure it doesn't come off the edge here. So I like to actually move my zipper pull first towards the center of the bag. So that way when I get to this point, I can just move it past the needle, but not too close to the edge. So I have to worry about it coming off and then continue on. That's how you get a nice straight seam by the zipper. So once you have these stitched together, go ahead and fold your lining and your exterior away from the zipper so that they are wrong sides together. I like to match up the bottom corners, clip those, and then I'll clip the bottom edge as well. And then I'll just tug on my zipper to get it nice and flat. If you're using all quilt cotton here, you can definitely just take an iron and then just press along this edge by the zipper. That will help keep it flat. Otherwise, just finger press it and use some clips to help you. And you're gonna just be holding it a lot at the sewing machine as well, so. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do your best to keep it straight and flat. So there you go, now one side of your exterior is finished. Let's go ahead and repeat for the other side. So with my zipper and attached exterior right side up, I'm gonna grab my other exterior and lay it right side down. Now you can see, these are gonna be on opposite sides. I'm okay with that, but that's something to think about whenever you're designing your bag. If you want them both to end up on the same side, you're gonna to have to plan that out ahead of time. I'm just gonna lay my exterior right side down. And once again, since my zipper is longer, I'm not lining it up with the edge of my zipper. I'm lining it up with the edges of the exterior panel that has already been attached. So I'll line it up on the top, on the corner, and then over here on the side, I'll just clip that in place first. Do the same on the other side. And then we'll just add clips along the entire top edge. Now once again, let's go baste this in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have that basted on, you can go ahead and flip this so that the already attached lining is right side up. Grab your remaining lining side panel and lay it right side down and just line it up along the edges of the previous lining and along the top edge where you just basted on your exterior panel to your zipper. 
And now we can take this to the sewing machine and sew along this top edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So once you have that side sewn on, let's once again just push these panels away from the zipper. The lining and the exterior should be wrong sides together. Okay, now let's take this back to the sewing machine and just top stitch along the other side of the zipper on the panels we just attached at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have them both top stitched, you can just take this panel and put it to the side for a moment. Next, grab your little D-ring strap. If you're using quilt cotton here, I would suggest you get a piece of quilt cotton that is two inches by two inches and then double fold it down so that it ends up a half of an inch by two inches. If you're not quite sure how that method works, just wait till we get to the strap portion of this and I'll show you how I do that with the waterproof canvas. But if you're using cork or vinyl or anything like that, we're just gonna leave these raw edges as is. So now we're just gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along the long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that top stitching in place, grab your D-ring and just slide your strap over the straight part of your D-ring so that the wrong sides will wrap around and come together and then the right sides are facing out. Now you can just really quickly take this back to the sewing machine and just baste at an eighth of an inch along the short edge just to hold it in place. Okay, so now grab your exterior panel and if you have a preference on which side your D-ring goes, think about that now. So I actually like the D-ring to go on the same side as with the top zipper when it's closed, so that way I can hold it and open it like that. So I'm gonna grab my pattern piece and on the pattern piece, it has a mark here for where the loop is. Just line up the pattern piece with the bottom edge of your exterior panel on whichever side you're gonna attach your D-ring. Grab your D-ring and place it so that the ring part is pointing in towards the center of the bag. And then what I do is I actually just like pinch it to the fabric and then move the paper and add a clip. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be in this general area. You don't really want it to be much higher because we're gonna fold this down in the end. I'll show you that. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and we're just gonna baste this in place, but only along the exterior panel. So don't baste it on the lining as well. It's only gonna be basted to the exterior panel. All right, here we go. So now you have that basted in place. Now let's take our exterior and let's fold our exterior panels right sides together. And then let's fold our lining panels right sides together. Now where your zipper is, pinch the zipper tape so that the zipper coils go towards the lining side. And then the seam should go up towards the exterior. So try to line it up as best you can. And then once you have it lined up, just clip along these edges. We're only clipping along the side edges of the exterior and the lining. There we go. Once you have one side clipped, go ahead and rotate and do the same thing on the other side. Once again, pushing that zipper tape so the teeth are going down towards the lining side and the seams are pointing up towards the exterior. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along these two side clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. But here's the thing. I am not going to be sewing over the zipper. So I'm gonna sew along the lining at 3 eighths of an inch, and then I'm gonna lift my needle, bring it over the zipper, and then continue sewing at 3 eighths of an inch. I wanna show you, even though these are plastic zipper teeth, when you sew over the zipper teeth, when it's flat like this, the needle will find its way in between the teeth, and for the most part, you're not gonna have any problems. However, our zipper is not like this. Our zipper, is like this. It's on its side, it's not even flat, it's completely on its side. This part right here, my needle cannot go through. This is a, like a rock. I broke three needles in a row trying to sew over a zipper that was placed like this. My machine can't do it. If your machine can, that's great. But it doesn't matter at this point. In a future step, we're actually gonna be sewing over the zipper more when it's flat. So you don't need to sew over it right now. So I'm just gonna sew along the lining skip over the zipper and then continue on all at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my zipper so that it's the same width as my panels. Now you can open up your zipper on the inside and then just flip this whole thing so it's right side out. Okay, and then we're gonna flip it so that just the lining is right side out. So tuck that exterior in Try to get these corners out as best you can. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. We're gonna deal with those corners later. It, it doesn't even matter, honestly, because these corners are gonna be covered up. Okay, so now line up the bottom raw edges so that they are wrong sides together. And I'm gonna line up the seam side first and then clip together. And then line up the other side seam as well. And then just clip along the entire bottom edge here 
with the lining and the exterior wrong sides together. Okay, now let's take this to the sewing machine and let's just baste along this bottom edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, there we go. Now that you have that basted in place, go ahead and set this to the side. So now grab your lining and your exterior bottom panels and lay them wrong sides together, just matching up all of the edges. You can add a few clips here to hold it in place. And now let's take this to the sewing machine and baste along the entire bottom panel at a quarter inch seam allowance. Remember, these are wrong sides together, right sides out. All right, once you have everything basted and ready to be put together, now we're gonna attach our bottom to our sides. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find midpoints along our bottom panel. So just line up the short edges together and then you can mark this with a pen or you can use scissors and just make a tiny, tiny clip right on that corner. You just wanna know where all of our midpoints are. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the long edges. Just take your long edges and fold them together so that we can find the midpoint of the shorter edges. All right, once you have the midpoints marked on your bottom panel, all we have to do is find the midpoint along the long edge on our exterior panel. So we have the seams here, which we're gonna count for some midpoints. So just take your seams and fold them so that they're matching up with one another and then pull this. And your middle seams here between the both of your exterior panels should be at your midpoint. So just check that. If they are, then you don't have to mark anything. Here we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my bottom panel and I'm going to line it up with the exterior of the bottom panel and the exterior of the side panels, right sides together. The longer edge of my bottom panel is gonna line up with that center seam between my two different contrasting exterior side panels. There we go. I'm gonna clip that together first. And then I'll clip the other side as well on the long edge of my bottom panel. And then I'll take the shorter edge midpoint and line that up with the seam that's on the side of my pouch. And then once again, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, all we have to do is clip along the edge in between all of our midpoint clips. And you do have some curves here. If you're struggling with it, you can clip into the exterior part. Just don't clip beyond the basting stitches. So we did a quarter inch seam allowance so we could cut a little bit deeper into the side if we need to. So for example, right here, my bottom panel is really bunching up and my side panel is a little tight. So I'm just gonna add a couple little clips that do not go beyond a quarter of an inch. And that will allow the side panel to spread out a little bit more so that I can clip it to the bottom panel without too much ruffling. But again, this is one of those patterns where it doesn't have to be perfect and it will still turn out really great. So go ahead and clip the entire bottom panel together with the sides. Once you have it all clipped in place, now we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew along this bottom edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Use a stiletto and go slow here. What I like to do is after I do my first round, I'm gonna check it and as long as it's all good and I don't need to unpick anything, I'm gonna do a second round around and that's going to allow me to reinforce the bottom really nicely but it's also gonna allow me to smooth out any kind of wonky wavy edges that occur whenever I do my first round of stitching. Once you have that bottom sewn on, I like to go around and just kind of trim down, especially around the corners, because my bottom slips out of place a lot. So if the corners are a little bit bigger than 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. That is okay. So I'm just gonna try to trim it down so that everything is about 3 8 of an inch from the stitching. So once you have this double stitched and you have it trimmed down as much as you'd like, so any like little sections where one panel is a little bit further out than the other, I just trim those down. Once that's all good, then you're gonna grab your piece of binding. Now, I like to use waterproof canvas. This is just a one inch wide strip and it's about 38 inches long. And what I do is I'm just gonna start on one of the flat sides of the bottom of my bag 
and I'm gonna take the wrong side of my waterproof canvas and I'm just gonna hug it around that seam. So it's just hugging that raw seam and I just fold it in half just like that. I don't double fold it, I don't do anything like that. I'm just folding this in half around the seam. When I get to the curves, it does pinch and it does pleat, but I'm okay with that. If the binding is pinching and pleating, you're not even gonna notice it inside the bag, especially if you're using the same colored waterproof canvas for the binding as you are for the lining. And it's not gonna cause any pleating or anything on the exterior of the bag. So personally, especially for bags that are gonna be used for maybe toiletry items or crayons and markers, things like that, I really like to use waterproof canvas because it can take a beating and you can just wipe it down. You don't have to, you know, put it in the washing machine or anything like that to clean it. And for the most part, it's really easy to work with. It's also typically one of the most affordable fabric options. All right, once I'm mostly all the way around, I'm gonna try to just get to the flat part and leave my last clip. And I'll just leave this hanging off like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and starting at my first clip, I'm just gonna sew pretty much right down the center of this. You could definitely sew more towards the raw edge here on the inside. However, you are running the risk of not catching that bottom edge. So to be safe, I just sew right down the middle. It covers the stitching, it covers the raw seam, it looks great in the end. I'm just gonna go all the way around the bag. And then once I get to the end, I'll just trim down this tail so it covers it about an inch to an inch and a half and then wrap it over the beginning edge and then just sew right over that as well. This is very easy to do. Once you have it sewn on, it should look something like this. This is a little bit messier of a version. Usually they're a little bit cleaner than this. However, if you wanna fix this, you can definitely go ahead and unpick it and fix it. If you did down the center like I did and you find that you just really don't like this raw edge right here, you can go over this one more time and just get closer to that raw edge going all the way around. I like to do this first row first just to kind of get it attached. If you're using matching colored binding and matching colored thread, you wouldn't see any of this in the finished product. So get the binding the way you like it. Don't stress out too much about it. It shouldn't be that challenging. Now let's flip our bag right side out. Here we go. Now we have our bag right side out. Now you might be noticing these are some pretty wonky, messed up looking corners right here. That's okay, we're gonna fix them. So I'm going to close my zipper, but not all the way because I do have my raw zipper edges over here kind of popping out, which isn't great, but that's because I couldn't sew over them. So I'm just gonna add some clips to it to hold it in place. So now poke out your corner just a little bit. Don't stress out about it though. We're honestly gonna cut this off anyways. So get it somewhat poked out, but you should notice that it looks pretty messy and that is okay. So now since we're making the medium size, we're gonna box these top corners. So we're gonna measure one and three quarters inch from the top zipper and one and three quarters inch from the side over here. It's okay if it's not perfect. So we're gonna do one and three quarters of an inch from the top, one and th three quarters of an inch from the side. I'm just gonna mark the line like this. There we go. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back of this. So once again, one and three quarters of an inch from the side and also from the zipper. And mine's pretty messy, but that's okay. So as long as I can see my little boxed corners and they should be lining up about the same place on the zipper and over here on the side. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is we're gonna box these corners. So I'm gonna open my zipper a little bit. You actually want this zipper up here to stay closed. So you're gonna push your hand in, separate the exterior panels away from the zipper so that we have a triangle here with the zipper going straight up the center of it. And then this fold right here on the side should fold right at the corner of your box. So right where the back and the front of your box meet. And then you should have a straight line going across the zipper right here. So I'm gonna add some clips over here to the sides. There we go. Just to try to hold it all together. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. 
The other side you might notice is a little bit trickier if you have your zipper ends kind of going all over the place. So I close the zipper a little bit to help me line this up. So you can see now I have it nice and straight. It's going straight up just like that. The one thing to remember here is to pull the zipper back down though. Don't leave the zipper up here because we're actually gonna sew and cut this part off. So try to pinch that zipper tape as close as it will get. Use clips here to help hold everything together. And you're just gonna have to hold it at the machine as well. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this marked line. If you wanna make sure none of your stitches are possibly seen in the end, Start anywhere from a quarter to a half of an inch away from the fold. So maybe start a half of an inch away from this edge right here, in, back stitch, go across, and then stop a half of an inch as well. It is possible that a little bit of these sides will show in the end. So if you really don't want your stitches shown, then start a little bit more in and end before you get to the edge. I'm okay with it, and I'm doing another step to try to prevent that. So I'm just gonna start from the edge all the way to the other edge sew along those marked lines. Make sure your zipper's more towards the middle, not off on the side over here. So as you saw, I sewed this from the front. I sewed it with the top of the bag up. I think that that's really important because as you can see, if I flip this over, my stitch line is not in the same place as my marked line. And that's okay because this section right here is gonna be folded over, you're not even gonna see it, so I don't worry about that mess. However, if I would have sewn it from this side, then this stitch line wouldn't be where my marked line is and it's possible that the marking would have shown in the end. So I do suggest for the rest of the few steps here, we stick to sewing on the top side because the bottom here is not gonna be seen. So if, we, if that doesn't look good, that's gonna be fine. So now grab some scissors and you're gonna cut towards the edge about 3 eighths of an inch away from your stitch line. Just cutting off that corner of the zipper. This is why, if you remember, I did not sew over the zipper when I was putting this all together. This is why, because you just cut it off anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. It kept breaking my needles, so I just skipped that. Okay, so now grab your leather top corners. For me, that's going to be this cork fabric. Now, I have mine cut a little bit longer than the marked lines. Here, I'll mark where it's supposed to be cut. So you can see these marked lines here are where it's supposed to be cut, but I wanted to keep it a little bit on the long side because I'm gonna be just taking this, folding it in half, and pinching it over this edge. And I wanna make sure that it's long enough. So I am okay with that. I think I'm actually just going to follow along those marked lines just to scotch outside of them. So it stays just a tiny bit bigger than the marked lines, but not much. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly take these to the sewing machine and we're going to just top stitch around all four edges just to give this a nice look and really provide some extra stability to these edges. So now grab your leather top strap and we're just gonna fold it wrong sides together and long sides together. And I'm gonna add some clips to the folded edge just to keep it folded in half. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna hug it around the raw edge of my bag. And what I wanted to do is I want these raw edges from my strap to just cover the stitching on that raw top corner of my bag. Here we go. I'm not worried about how it looks on the bottom here, right here, I'm not worried about that because that's gonna be covered up. I'm just worried on how it looks on the top here. Go ahead and repeat that for the other side. So once again, I'm just hugging this over the corner, making sure to cover up the stitching. There we go. And then just clip along the sides. All right, so now we can take this to the sewing machine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trace my top stitching along this long edge right here. I'm holding this all in place. It is very likely that once you do this, you can trace over this top stitching here, but if you flip it over, the stitching's not gonna match up with the top stitching on the bottom. That is fine, it doesn't have to. It only matters how it looks up here. We're not gonna see the bottom at all. So we're gonna top stitch over this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just like I said, tracing over the previous top stitching. All right, there we go. Honestly, the back looks really good. I've never had it line up that well, so that's fantastic. So if you didn't have rivets here, you could just leave your bag like this and it would have a fun little accent like this. But if you have rivets or Chicago screws or anything that you can use here to attach this, we're gonna now, we're gonna fold this down to give this a really cool look on the side. So I'm gonna grab the template for my top corner and I'm going to line it up so that I can see the holes 
for my rivets. So I just poked a hole in the very center of both of these dots. I'm gonna line this up and centered on my piece of fabric here. And using my marking tool, I'm just going to draw inside those marked holes. Then I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm going to hole punch where those marked holes are. Okay, once you have your holes punched all the way through, what you're gonna do is take that strap flap, fold it down. Now, we want it to fold right above our D-ring. So you might notice you can't just fold it down like that. It has to be tucked in right underneath its edge. And what I do is I just fold it in place and just get it the way I like it. Grab my marking tool and I'm just going to mark in those punched holes that I marked, making sure I'm marking onto this exterior fabric here. Hold it in place and do it again. There we go. Lift it up and now I have both of my marks transferred onto my exterior fabric. So now once again, I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna insert it into my bag, insert the flap between the hole puncher Make sure you don't have any of the side panel getting folded underneath. I, I did have that problem where I was trying to punch a hole here on the side and the front side was snuck in there and I had an extra hole, yay. So then just punch a hole right over those marked dots. Do this for both of them. Okay, once you have those holes punched, grab two of your sets of rivets and I'm gonna take the male rivet and I'm gonna insert it through the strap tab and then I'm gonna push it in through the adjacent hole on the side and I can push it into the lining and then I'll take the female end and just snap it just like that. And that will hold in place while I continue working. So I'm gonna take the other male end, insert that through that top corner piece, push it through the side. And then once I get it through to the lining, I'll take the female end and just snap it on. And there we go, and that gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like. And all we have to do is press that in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process on the other side. Once again, I'm gonna grab my template and center it, because once, like I said, I made mine a little bit wider than the template, so I have to center it a little bit better. I'm gonna mark my holes in those dots. And if you notice they're a little uneven after you mark them, you can always adjust them. You can wipe this off and try again. But to be completely honest, what looks obvious and uneven here, it won't look like that in the end. So give yourself a break. Okay, once I have those holes punched, I'm just going to fold this down, tucking it in right on itself. Like I said, I'm not folding it down here. You know, I'm just folding it down right underneath itself. And then once I have it the way I want, I'll grab my marking tool and just mark in those punched holes so that the dots transfer onto my exterior fabric. And then I'll grab my hole punch. And I know this part can be a little bit tricky because you really gotta smush everything in there. But like I said, just make sure you move the sides out of the way. You don't wanna punch a hole through those. You have to get very creative when you try to fix that. Punch a hole over your marked dot. And do the same thing on the other side. All right, grab two more sets of your rivets. Insert the male end first through the top strap and then insert it through that hole on the side. Grab your female end and just push it through so it should come all the way through to the lining. Here we go, do the same on the other hole. There we go, so now you know exactly what your bag's gonna look like. All we have to do now is press down these snaps so they don't pop out. So I've got my rivet press here. And you just kinda have to manipulate this a little bit. Do your best to make sure fabric doesn't get in between the press. But you should be able to lay it in there pretty simply. I didn't have any problems with any of the sizes. And just press down all four of your rivets. Or if you're using Chicago screws, just make sure that they're all screwed and glued in. All right, there you go. You can readjust your bag to make it look nice. And if you're not adding a strap, then you're done. Isn't that cute? This is such a cute little bag, I just love it. Okay, so now let's set this to the side and we're gonna work on the strap. So since I'm not using a leather strap, I don't want any raw edges on this showing in the end. So I changed my measurements for my strap to two inches by 18 inches long. First what I'm gonna do is mark a midpoint along the entire long edge. So I'm going one inch in from one of the long edges and I'm marking this on the wrong side of the fabric, not the right side. Now I'm gonna take the long edges and fold them wrong sides together up to meet that midpoint mark. And I'll just use my clips here to hold it in place. Once you have one side clipped, go ahead and repeat that with the other side so that the long raw edges are both tucked in towards the center of the strap. 
Now, if you'd like to tuck in the raw short edges, you can go ahead and do that real quick. We're just gonna fold those in by about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. It's up to you. But this way we won't have any raw edges to deal with at all. So I just tuck those in and then refold the long edges again. And that should hide those short edges completely. Go ahead and repeat this with the other side. Okay, now fold the entire strap in half with the folded edges coming together and hiding in all the raw edges in the center. Your strap should now be half of an inch thick and up just a, under 18 inches long. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that done, grab your swivel hook and then whichever side is your wrong side, insert that in so that the wrong side is up against that flat edge of your swivel hook and then fold this down about an inch or an inch and a half. Here we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold the whole strap up so that the other short edge meets and overlaps the previous short edge. And they should overlap each other anywhere between a half of an inch and an inch. So whatever you're comfortable with here, just like that. Once you have them the way you want them, you can mark a dot if you'd like on where you want your rivet to go and then grab your hole punch and see if you can punch through all those layers. I don't know if I can. Oh, I punched through all the layers really well. That's fantastic. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab another male end of my rivet and insert it in through all those holes. I know this gets pretty thick here and then take your female end and just snap it in on the other side. Grab your rivet press and just press this down. There you go, now your strap is done. All you have to do is attach it to your D-ring on your bag. And now your bag is complete. Isn't that adorable? I love this little pouch. And it's such a unique way to make a pouch that we've made versions of before. So isn't this just adorable? I love this boxy pouch. And this is perfect for traveling. This is perfect for keeping on your countertop in your bathrooms, in your craft rooms, in your office. This is great for schools, work. I mean, it's just boxy pouches are so popular because we can use them everywhere. It's one of those items that no matter how many you make, everybody in your life keeps finding uses for them. It's the best gift. It's just, it's honestly just one of my favorite shapes of bags to make. Here's our lining. Like I said, we used that binding using the waterproof canvas. Turned out perfect. Love these little side accents. I love that it really, it really addresses the top corners of zip pouches. Everybody who's made zip pouches knows the frustration of you work so hard and you get that top corner and it's still chunky and messy and not pretty like the rest of your bag and it frustrates you. And I like how in this pattern, we just cut it off. <laughs> We're just like, you know what? We're not even gonna deal with that. We're just gonna cut it off, cover it up, rivet it down. I love that. So this is the Orlando pouch. Don't forget, you also have the pencil case size, which is adorable. Again, here's another medium size. And then here is the larger size, which is about the same height, but it is wider. So I hope you give this pouch a try. Let me know if you do. Let me know what you work with. Did you try my binding method? How did you like the rivets? Did you use Chicago screws? I'd love to see somebody make this with Chicago screws. I do actually have some. I will try to make another version with the Chicago screws. I know a lot of you guys would like me to use them in demonstrations, and I promise I will. A lot of times though, the rivet press, it's just so fast and it's right there. So I just end up using it a lot, but I promise I will use Chicago screws. The next time we are supposed to use rivets, we're using Chicago screws, it's for you. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. I think so. Thank you so much once again for allowing me to film this tutorial. I will talk to you later. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.